Here's a classic I found on Reddit the other day. How many pointers are declared here? Int pointer a comma b semicolon. And this question has probably already been discussed to death, so I put a little twist on it. What's the shortest code I would have to write to find out the types of a and b? <laughs> and the shortest, shortest solution I came up with is four characters, and I was a bit sad about that, and then I optimized that later to zero characters. But let's start with the four characters. So the trick is to simply perform an illegal operation on a and b. For example, we could divide a by b and any C compiler should throw a hard error about this because it's simply not possible to divide pointers, <laughs> no matter how you slice it. So my ADE reports it like this. We're trying to divide an int pointer by an int. And from that, we can deduce that A is an int pointer and B is an int. Problem solved. Okay, so what does this mean exactly? We could say A should point to B and then indirectly through A, we want to store the value 42 in B. Let's see if that works. No hard errors, that's good. Then uh, we modify the variable a here to the left, we store a pointer to b that looks like this, an orange arrow. And then the second assignment storing 42 in b via a looks like this, 42 ends up in b. So that works correctly. Okay, and then I was a bit sad thinking, why can we only see these nice type diagnostics if there is an error in our program. <laughs> Why can't we always see them even in error-free programs? And now in the latest version, we can simply right-click on any expression. For example, if I right-click on A, the system tells me A is of type int pointer, whereas B is of type int. And then the address of operator applied to B gives us an int pointer. Note that the address of operator, I think it's not a terribly nice name, it doesn't give us an address, an untimed pointer, a void pointer, it gives us an int pointer. Okay, uh, We don't have to store it in A to make it a pointer, even the expression address of B is already an int pointer. Okay, and then down here, again, A is an int pointer. If we dereference that, then that is an int. And 42 is uh, an integer with the constant compile time constant value 42. Okay, cool. Um, and this right clicking doesn't only work on expressions, it also works on um, these declarators. So I can simply right click on A, and the system tells me A is an int pointer. And if I right click on B, it tells me B is an int. That would be the zero character solution. Now I could delete this code <laughs> if I wanted to. Okay, um, so how does this work from a grammar perspective or compiler perspective? So here's a simplified excerpt from the C grammar. Declarations always start with um, at least one type specifier. And here you can see the list of type specifiers. So how would we start parsing here at the int? Is int a type specifier? Yes, here we can see it. So we start with int. And then the next token is the pointer. Is that also a type specifier? No, it's not a type specifier. So we go on to the declarator here. Um, is the pointer a declarator? Yeah, so declarators optionally start with a pointer. So here goes our pointer. And then the a is the direct declarator. The details are left out. Then later we see um, the comma. And after that, we see the b. Right. So that's how it's passed. And that's why it's considered better style not to put the space here, but to put the space here. So the compiler doesn't care where you put the spaces. The compiler <laughs> literally only sees int pointer a comma b semicolon. Um, and it's just con considered bad style to put the space here because it, it, it looks like the um, asterisk belongs to the type specifier when in reality it belongs to the declarator. Okay, and now you can see that the declaration mirrors the use. That's the intention behind the C declarator syntax. So it means um, we declare A in such a way that when we later dereference it, like here, then that dereference expression is of type int. And indeed we saw that the dereference expression is of type int. And from that we can then deduce if dereferencing A gives us an int, then A itself must be an int pointer as we saw above here. Okay, yeah, again, then we don't need this code anymore. Maybe let's remove it <laughs> and it still works. A is an int pointer and B is an int. 
Okay, so if we wanted to uh, make B a pointer, we could, well, simply put another pointer on its declarator, then B would also be an int pointer. And if you don't want to have multiple asterisks in the same line, but still declare two pointers, let's use a type def, let's say, I don't know, int pointer, and then we can say int pointer A comma B, and then A is an int pointer and B is an int pointer. But in my experience, C programmers are perfectly fine um, writing code like this. There's nothing wrong with that once you're used to it. Yeah, so if you're a user of my IDE, I strongly suggest you update and then you can simply right click on your declarators and find out the types.